Okay, so this uh, next video is titled The Five Temperaments. The Five Temperaments. The first temperament is titled the, I don't, and I'm trying to see if I can um, pronounce this correctly, but it's phlegmatics, the phlegmatics. I'm actually going to uh, do a, do a, um, a Google definition search on my phone and see what they have to say about this before we actually get into this, this lesson. The phlegmatic definition. Here's the definition of phlegmatic, of a person having an unemotional and stolidly calm disposition. Okay, so it's a phlegmatic is of a person having an un, unemotional and stolidly calm disposition. Um, so which, with the um, the author of this um, of this study, she's. This is what she has to say about the phlegmatic. Phlegmatics are good negotiators. So what I want you guys to do, I'm going to do it myself, is I'm going to try to figure out which of the five of these is me, because I, I want to know who I want to know which one this is. This is a very interesting study. Um, so again, the phlegmatic phlegmatics are good negotiators. If you are phlegmatic, you are task and people oriented. So if you are people and task oriented, this could be you. You have a laid back approach to life. Do you have a laid back approach to life? And you make friends easily? Do you make friends easily? Do you have a laid back approach to life? Are you task and people oriented? The phlegmatic has no fear of rejection. The phlegmatic has no fear of rejection and can handle unaffectionate and hostile people. Again, the phlegmatic has no fear of rejection and can handle unaffectionate and hostile people. Because of the phlegmatic's need for peace, they tend to handle difficult people in one of two ways. They will either confront gently to bring resolution or stick their head in the sand and hope the problem goes away. Is that you? That is definitely not me. I can I can I can say that is not me. Um, but is that you? That's the question that I'm asking. Is that you? It could be you. The next one is called the subpoena. Let me see what Google has to say. The supine definition. No. S-U-P-I-N-E. Here's the definition of supine, of a person lying face upward. Of a person lying face upward is what doesn't give much of a uh, definition. Um, so here she um, she describes the supine person. This could be you. So so listen carefully. This temperament aims to please everyone. Do you try to please everyone? Sapines have a very tender heart. If you are sapine, you are a giver, but you are not entirely selfless. But you are not entirely selfless. This is talking about the sapine person. You need recognition. You often say yes, when you prefer to say no. Sapines struggle with feeling inferior to others. Do you struggle with feeling inferior to others? Um, so when it comes to dealing with difficult people, they often get run over and taken advantage of. Um... I don't really think this is my, me either. There's parts of here that I do feel that it could be me, like um, temperament aims to please everyone. I, I, I try to, it's not that I try to appease or please everyone, it's just that as Christians, we, we wanna, we wanna, you know, 
we want to, our aim is to please Jesus, but at the same time, um, we know we, we want to make sure that we're, that people see Jesus in us. So would Jesus, was Jesus, uh, was it Jesus's aim to please everyone? I don't think so. Um, he actually came not, the Bible says not to, um, abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And it took a lot of people, um, not being pleased with him. So, um, Sapines have a very tender heart that I believe I have a tender heart. I, I think I have a tender heart. Um, I think it's a good thing to have a tender heart. The Bible talks about tender hearted. I'm actually going to turn this into a Bible study because that's what this is, is a discipleship channel. So, um, what does the Bible say about tender hearted? Bible verse on tender hearted. It does, I know it says, I know there's a scripture. Oh, okay, yeah, it is. It's in Ephesians chapter 4, 31. Ephesians 4, 31. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 31. According to good news for everyone, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Oh, that doesn't say nothing about tenderheartedness. Um, anyhow, for the sake of the, um, let's see, I'm actually going to, I'm not going to try to rush through this, so most of you guys know me and my, my, uh, my stuff, I'm kind of take the time to f figure it out. So, um, tender hearted Bible verse. Oh, yeah. So, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, Christ's uh, sake, has forgiven you. So, that's a great. That, that is, that's what the Lord reminded me of. So, Again, the subpoena person is this temperament aims to please everyone. Subpoenas have a very tender heart. If you are subpoena, you are a giver, but you are not entirely selfless. You need recognition. What is to need recognition? Let's find that out. Recognition. Here's the definition of recognition. Identification of someone or something or person from previous encounters or knowledge. So recognition is to, to, to be need approval, as uh, I would say it. Um, you need to be approved. And when the Bible says that we're already approved, um, there actually is a, there is a scripture about that. Um, Bible verse about being approved. According to Bible study tools, 22 everyone who believes has God's approval through faith in Jesus Christ. There is no difference between people. 23 because all people have sinned, they have fallen short of God's glory. 24 they receive God's approval freely by an act of his kindness through the price Christ Jesus paid to set us free. Amen. So we are um, we are already approved. Um, when we have when we put our faith in Christ, we've been approved. Um, the Bible says that we before the foundation of the world, we were um, we were approved to be to stand holy and blameless before Him in love. So when we get born again, we have to be. Um, we have to. That's what we we uh, we work toward is um, is standing before God, holy and being to be holy and blameless before Him in love. Okay. Um, so the subpoena person. Uh, if you are a subpoena, you are a giver, but you are not entirely selfless. You need recognition. So that's kind of like being tender-hearted, but at the same time, you need approval. And so you know, you could be that person. I don't know. Let's let's find out who we are in here. I, um, you often say yes when you prefer to say no. That's definitely not me. Um, I don't have a problem with saying no when I don't want to do something. Um, I don't know if that's a bad thing. I just the way I am. 
Um, if I don't feel it's the Lord's calling or the Lord, you know, I just, that's like, it's a boundary. It's a healthy boundary, I believe. Sapines struggle with feeling inferior to others. Inferior is, uh, let's see what that word inferior means. Inferior. Here's the definition of inferior. Lower in rank, status, or quality. Okay. So they feel less than, right? So if you're a superior, um, so a subpoena person, so let's reread it. The subpoena person aims to please everyone. Um, that's definitely not me. Subpoenas have a very tender heart. That, I believe that's me in specific situations. I guess maybe in others I probably would have, would not, people wouldn't say that about me. Um, if you are a subpoena, you are a giver. Um, but you are not entirely selfless. You need recognition. You often say yes when you prefer to say no. Subpoenas struggle with feeling inferior to others they, so subpoenas feel uh, like they have to prove is what it sounds like they have to prove themselves prove, prove something to others that they're not worthless and selfless i guess that's kind of a would be a would be a spirit it could be a spirit but it could also be just a mindset i guess a wrong mindset so when it comes to dealing with difficult people now now listen listen to this this so is when it comes to dealing with difficult people they often get run over and taken advantage of um, so I'm dealing with difficult people. Um, yeah, I guess that could be that. That would be a downfall of um, that would be the downfall of um, of being feeling having that inferior spirit. Um, so that's definitely not me. If that is you, take a note of it because this study is um, intended to. It's 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 a biblical study. So um, even though there hasn't been no verses, I, I'm trying to throw verses in there as we go, um, but. Anyways, if for those of you who are following along, um, you know, let me know in the comments uh, which one is you and um, what you're learning about this, uh, about yourself um, in this study. That'd be great to hear. Okay, the next one is the sanguine. The sanguine? I've actually heard that before. I've heard somebody say, say speak about that. Let's hear the sanguine. Sanguine. Here's the definition of sanguine, optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. Okay, so that that sounds like me so far, but we'll see. <laughs> I like to I like to stay positive. Um, so it's saying that the Google definition is of sanguine is optimistic um, or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. That's. I, I think that's definitely for me. That's definitely would be me. Um, this extroverted temperament. What does extroverted mean? This is more and more sounding like me. Hold on one second. Extroverted. Here's the definition of extroverted, outgoing, and socially confident. Outgoing and socially confident. Definitely me. So this sanguine is sounding to sound like me now. Um, and so this extroverted temperament is invigorated by being around people. Okay. Uh, if you are sanguine, you love to t you love to talk to people. That's me, cause look at all my videos. <laughs> Amen. It's not cause I like to be seen or because I need your approval. It's just that's just my my nature. Because I think it's cause I'm an evangelist and I love talking and I love talking the things of God and I'm actually loving these studies because it's teaching us teaching me people and how to um, how to uh, be a better people person. Um, and I, and that will help me in my evangelism um, uh, ventures in in the future as well. And how to and then I'd be able. We're gonna. It's gonna teach us how to how to understand people better, right? That, I think that's as Christians we should. This is something that we should we should want to study. So this is I can I'm considering this teaching as, a, as maybe an evangelism teaching. It's a really good tool um, to to be able to relate to people and different things. So um, okay. So the sanguine, that sounds like me so far. So this country, extroverted temperament is invigorated by being around people. If you are sanguine, you love to talk to people. You often speak impulsively and dominate conversations. Uh-oh. Like, is this me? I have to be honest with myself. You often speak impulsively. What does impulsively mean? Impulsively. Here's the definition of impulsive, acting or done without forethought. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
That is me. I'm impulsive. I am impulsive. Oh, someone take note of this. So I'm definitely, it sounds like I'm the sanguine. It's actually, I think somebody told me that I'm the sanguine before too. Someone did tell me this, that I'm the sanguine. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the sanguine. So far I'm the sanguine. We'll see. Um, extroverted temperament and aggravating by around people. If you're a sanguine, you love to talk. Yeah. If you often speak impulsively and dominate conversations. Ikes. You often speak impulsively. So to speak impulsive means to think without, uh, to speak without thinking. Is that, is that's what he said, right? Acting or done without forethought. Um, acting as an impulse. It could be, uh, um, what my pastor called me one time. He said that I was, I was acting hasty. hasty. So that's hastiness, right? So that's something that I, I need to deal with in me is um, being impulsive and hasty. So I'm writing that down. So what you guys should do too is write down the things that, that, that you're learning about yourself and because we're going to learn how to, because then I'm going to, well, by the Holy Spirit, well, I'll, I'll figure that out how I'm going to how I'm gonna do this study. So there's a lot here. There's a lot more to read. But I'm going to continue to speak uh, and read um, and be led of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, so you often speak impulsively and dominate conversations. Um, I don't know if I dominate conversations. I, I don't mean to, but I guess this kind of a te this kind of a uh, extroverted temperament is that. Um, maybe it's rooted in pride. It could be. I, I'm maybe or, you know figuring that thinking I know more than the average person because I've studied so much. It could be a religious spirit. I mean, there could be a lot in this. Um, I'm going to take that to the Lord. So, um, okay, sanguines have difficulty when dealing with people who are challenging them. Ooh, to slow down. That's definitely me. Oh my gosh, man, this is crazy. Sanguines have difficulty when dealing. It's not that they can't or they won't because I I do. I love when sanguines have difficulty when dealing with people who are challenging them to slow down. Um, that's definitely me. And be dis disciplined. Yikes! I'm the sanguine. I have to submit it. They are frequently so optimistic that they forgot why they were upset with someone. That's totally me. I'm like, I get upset, but then I can just so quickly forgive you and like forget it and move on. Like, like I can get an argument with you right now in two seconds, and then hurt your feelings and say something that I didn't mean to say, or it's because I because I was because I was being impulsive, right, and hasty extroverted, temperamental, invigorated by being around people, sanguine, love to talk, blah, 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 blah. You often speak impulsively and dominate conversations. Sanguines have difficulty when dealing with people who are challenging them to slow down, right, and be disciplined. They are frequent, frequently so optimistic that they forget why they were upset with someone. So they're so they're they so optimistic. What is optimistic being? I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out what that is. Optimistic. Optimistic. Here's the definition of optimistic: hopeful and confident about the future. Okay, yeah, that's that's. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I and I'm 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 confident and hopeful, and I think that those are good things to be. But then you could cross the line when you get into pride. Um, so let me see here. They are frequently so optimistic, sure of themselves. I think sometimes people can, uh, can, um, can, you could, you could see, opt think, see optimistic and, and think pride or, but in reality, it's not pride. It's just someone that's, someone that's confident and, uh, and hopeful, right? Like, so, um, okay. That they forget why they were upset with someone. And, and that's me. Like, I, have you ever got? Have you ever argued with somebody, and then you're like, "Why are we arguing?" <laughs> it's like, what? What the heck happened? So it's not always a demon. It's it's um for those of you just um for those of you um, deliverance people out there, this is not always a demon. It could be just this is this is the type of personality yet people are. Right, so I have to understand that there's a, there's there's a supine person. There's that person that wants to please everyone and very tender-hearted and giver, but not 
you're not entirely selfless. You need recognition. You need recognition. You often say yes when you prefer to say no. The subpoena person, subpoena struggle with feeling inferior to others. So when it comes to dealing with difficult people, they often get run over and taken advantage of. I know people like that. Um, so if this is you, you know, you could work on that area of your life. There's there's ways to work on it. And that's, that's what this teaching is going to teach us. I'm sure as we go down down the list, it's going to teach us how to deal with these different things. So, all right. Um, the next one, and I've heard of this before, but I, I didn't know what it means. Because I didn't really pay attention to it. Uh, it's the melancholy. Melancholy. Let's see. Melancholy? Here's the definition of melancholy. A feeling of pensive sadness, typically with no obvious cause. A feeling of pensive sadness, typically with no obvious cause. So you're just, like, you're always, like, being sad, I guess, right? Pensive, what's pensive? Pensive is, uh, pensive is engaging in, involving, or reflecting deep or serious thought. So... Um, that could be you too. Is that you? Um, that's not me. I, I try not to get into too much serious thought. I just If I have a thought, I'll just run with it. And then if it's a thought and it's a positive thought, I'll run with it until if it doesn't work, then I'll just move on and I'll just I'll move on. It's not like I, I'm not sitting there and stewing on something. That's, I just, that's just not me. Okay. So the melancholy. Melancholies are serious. Uh-oh. And introverted in nature. That's definitely not me. <laughs> uh, I'm not the melancholy. Uh, I'm the sanguine. So melancholy is the one who's serious. All, all serious and serious and real quiet. You know, all the time. Like it's kind of uncomfortable for, for the for the sanguine. For me, the melancholy is is, is uncomfortable. I I don't like to. My spirit doesn't like to be around the melancholy because well because. They're introverted and they're quiet, and then the, the sanguine is, Wah! you know, he was out there, you know, and just wants to tell everybody about Jesus or whatever. So the melancholy, Melanchar melancholies are serious and introverted in nature. I think I think they're weird, but I'm, I think the melancholies probably think this. I'm a weirdo, <laughs> so it's, I guess it's fine. If you are a melancholy, you are a very private person. Well, that's something that I'm not private because everyone knows my life because I'm on YouTube like every day. So, <laughs> or my church friends and family. Um, melancholy is like people, but okay, hold on. If you are a melancholy, you are a very private person. I mean, I guess I'm private. Like, you know what I mean? Like, with my wife, we're just here chilling and having fun, and when we're not at church, just hanging out. And doing things together because I love her. <laughs> um, so if you're a melancholy, you are a very private person. You demand truth. Uh-oh. I know people like that. Order and reliability. <laughs> oh, man. If you're married to a melancholy and you're a sanguine, uh-oh. You guys better need to hear this study. Okay. Uh, or reliability. Melancholy is like people, but too much time in the company of others drains them. <laughs> okay. So like the sanguines, you know what I mean? That's how you know when you're with somebody and they can't hang, they can't, the Bible, actually there's a saying that in the secular world that says, uh, I can love them from a distance or, or you know, I, I, can, I can't spend too much time with that person because I... Because it's just, it's overwhelmed. They're overwhelming, you know? So I guess the sanguine would be overwhelming to the melancholy person. If you guys are married, uh, uh, Lord have mercy on the melancholy. Okay. So, uh, melancholy is like people, but too much time in their company of others drains them. This is seriously ex exact, exact, exacerbated when dealing with difficult people. Um, melancholies will typically get angry in their own mind. <laughs> yeah, this is not me. Because when I'm angry, I, I'll, I'll just let them know. I'll just, I don't care, you know. I'll just let's say, speak my mind. But melancholies, they're like zipit.com and they don't say nothing and you know they're mad and it's like, and then they make you pay, make you know that they're mad and da 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 da. So melancholies will typically get angry in their own mind and when pushed to the limit, will explode. <laughs> oh, man. 
then regret it. Oh man, leaving the difficult person, leaving the difficult person not taking responsibility for their end of the problem. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a narcissist, but I could be wrong. That's just my my thought on that. Um, but don't don't listen to my thought because I don't really know. I'm just that's just my opinion. Okay, um, and I'm not going to go off onto that. But see, sometimes everybody's got an opinion, you know, and it's like, it's just an opinion. So, all right, the next one, the choleric, choleric. And I've heard of that too, actually. I don't know who, who I've told me. I think my wife was telling me about these things or something back in the day. The choleric. According to Welcome Collection. The choleric is the most active of the four temperaments. Choleric personalities are hot, dry, fiery creatures. At their best, they're ambitious, brave, and proud. But they can also be vindictive, deceitful, and violent. Oh, <laughs> dang. This one here, if you're this one, you better watch out. So this sounds like the one, the pride before the fall, comes before the fall person. Um, let's, find out, let's find out about the choleric person. This choleric person is the temperament. This temperament is fast-paced. So they're quick to get angry, right? The Bible says, don't be quick. This is angry, do not sin. So that would be that person. I was that person before. If you are choleric, you get things done. If you are choleric, you get things done. Yeah, that's that could be me too. I think that could be all of us. Temperament, fast-paced temperament. Many people consider cholerics to be difficult people. That's definitely not me. Um, I'm not a difficult person. However, they're very focused and driven temperament that is not swayed by the emotions of others. That's totally me. That part that part of that is me. Um, they also have a very difficult time dealing with needy. Oh, <laughs> that's me. They have a very difficult time dealing with needy, unmotivated people. Híjole. Um, that's me actually right there. Híjole. So I have I have the sanguine and the choleric. I can, I'm a, I'm a crossbreed between the sanguine and the choleric. Uh, oh man. And I think that's well. I'm not gonna give my opinion. <laughs> but so for me, you guys, I I'm part I'm part I'm part sanguine and part choleric. What are you? 